So this is just a continuation of, of what, what, uh, what I was showing you all yesterday uh, with our website. And, and then we'll show some of the things that have been discussed today. But I just want to just go back to where we left off. And actually, uh, we had a question from somebody in St. George. Uh, I believe it was along the lines of um, how do you search, how do you find all of your water rights? And um, um, if you recall on our homepage, you can click on this uh, search button. And we have a number of ways uh, to search. Um, and so to answer that question, um, it really depends on what information you have, whether or not you know Obviously, if you know, you know your name, you can search by your name, but maybe your name is fairly common, and so you can get a, quite a few hits on that search. Um, you can also use the map to search in the area where you think you may have a water right. Um, any of these searches could be, would probably need to be used in tandem to, to, to find all of your water rights, okay? So again, we went over how to search by the water right number, uh, the source, by the point of version, how we can use the map. We also have just a couple more searches I wanted to show you uh, real quick. So um, we have this lists, which just a any of these links can be can be clicked on. Um, as an example, we have a new filings list, which will generate a list of of uh, water rights that have been filed within the last um, thirty days. It will come up. Um, or you can view that on a map. Um, we'll just skip that for, for now. And then also, um, we have um, uh, a link to water companies. Well, maybe I've lost my internet connection. This might be really short. <laughs> Says I'm con yeah, it Says connected. There we go. Uh, so we talked about, uh, as mentioned today, about uh, water companies, shares of stock, share statements, all these terms. Um, so on this page, we can um, go to water companies and, and see information about their water rights and any shares and, and shareholders in those companies. The uh, this list is not by all means comprehensive. It's fairly new. We're still um, trying to um, develop that, th develop the list. And if um, you belong to one of these companies and you <clears throat> look on here and see that information is up as, is out of date, please um, please notify us, and we can uh, get that updated. Um, so. Well, now we're going slow again. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, here we go. So anyway, so I just did a search by county. These are all the water companies we have listed for Utah County. And I can, <clears throat> at the top, we can see in these different columns uh, the number of water rights. That, now again, these may not be all the water rights that the company holds, but these are the ones that we are have 
included in this list or that we know of for this particular list. Um, any share statements that may have been done for this, exchanges and um, that sort of thing. So, and then if, if you click on, I won't, I won't go into that uh, for time, but if you click on one, then there's information about um, like the, who's the president of the company, contact information, the water rights, and shares, and that information can all be found there. Okay, so I believe, oh, let's see here. Let's go back to the homepage. Um, so the last thing on this search page I want to show is a mail, we have a mail log, so we can come in and, oh, what's today, the 7th? So I can search on here to see all many mail that has come into our office. Then also we can search by sender name, subject, a particular water right number. So <clears throat> this doesn't necessarily link to the water rights information, but it does give us an I give you an idea of if there's any been ma any mail or correspondence uh, received by the division, and just another resource we have on here. Okay, so <clears throat> under water rights again, come back to our home page. Uh, we have another link it's called notices. Okay, and there's two links here. We have an advertising list. This this is just a list of all the water right filings that have been um, filed recently that are on a list to be advertised in the newspaper. So um, I guess in lieu of, of looking in the newspaper, you could pull up this list and see what water rights new filings have been made and are being uh, published. And then we also have this email service that I want to talk about here. Okay, you can register for an account. This is free. All the, all the information on our website is free. There's no charge for any of this. Um, and what you can do is, um, let me just show real quick. Oops, I should type in my password, shouldn't I? Okay, so there's a couple things you can do on here. Once you register for an account, the first, the first, well, let's see. In the user information section, um, I can modify this account. Can do that. Um, cancel. Um, I can also add additional emails um, to this. Okay, this is an email notification program, so I can add other coworker emails to get so that they can get the same notifications that I want to receive. Okay, and the notifications you can receive. The first section is this water right exchange scan document folder tracking. Okay, and in there I can input a water right number. I've input one here and, and then hit add and it will add it to my list. Now if there is any, we, sh we showed the scan documents yesterday, if any scan document for this water right 15-1051 is added to the website then uh, this runs nightly then you'll, an email will be sent to, a notification will be sent to your email. Okay. And so you could do that for any, your own water rights. Um, to see if anything is going on or, you know, because if we send out um, uh, anything by mail, a copy will go in the scan documents and so you could immediately be uh, notified that something will be coming in the mail. Um, you could do this also to track other water rights of interest, um, and that sort of thing. Okay. The second thing is this new filing list of point of diversion notification. And here we can add so I can click on add new location and there are several different types of things I can do. First is a point location. So I can choose a point and I can zoom in and out on this map. So I can choose a point and then I can say and give it a radius, say a thousand. Well, that make it big and I can add that. And now, Anything, any new filing that is filed within 50,000 feet of that point, I will get a notification for that. Okay, these are new, new filings with a point of diversion within that specified area. Okay, and then so let me show you some of the others include 
um, I can actually choose a water right and use the that water right point of version. So again, I can use my own water right and then search and then specify an area, a radius um, or distance from that. Um, I can choose a water right area. So I can say everything in the 01 area, I want to get a notification if there's a new filing. Okay. Um, I can do it by county, hydrologic unit code, so like a watershed area. It's just a clickable, cl clickable map. You can choose one of those. Um, the other thing is a custom area. So I can say I'm interested in this polygon, okay? That polygon is stored in our database and if any new filing with a point of diversion inside that polygon is filed in our office, then you will be sent an email notification, okay? Um, is there any questions on that? Okay, I'll get the microphone. I was just wondering, so if you add alternate emails, <coughs> or additional emails, then it will, for example, I want to be notified of any, anything within a certain area, but our city attorney and our engineer want to be notified of anything that is effective um, on our water rights specifically. Right. But if I have both in there, they're going to get emails on everything yes. I put in here. Yes, that's okay. correct. Yes, so on the alternate emails, um, any, any of these notifications that have been set up would go to all of those emails. So if, if, if you have people in your organization that want a different set of notifications, they would need to register for their own a separate um, account, okay? All right. Moving on, let's see here, okay. So, <clears throat> All right, also under water rights, we can come here to rules and procedures and under appropriation policy, I'm gonna, and then use calculator, okay? So we talked about diversion depletion yesterday and, and how um, different different uses have different uh, duties or uh, amounts of water associated with them. So this calculator can be used to do some of that math that uh, Tamara was working on yesterday, okay? So up, up in the top, we, we can specify some of the information, some of the assumptions that we're using. In this case, um, it's preset to a duty of four acre feet and then the depletion four acre feet per acre and then the depletion, irrigation depletion is set to two acre feet per acre and then um, 0.45 acre feet for a family, 0 0.028 for, an, for a livestock, okay? And then down at the begin, at the end, I can then specify uses. So I can say, <clears throat> I've got 10 acres of irrigation, I've got one household, one full-time household, so um, and then also like on the irrigation, you can specify the, the, the irrigation season that that's associated, associated with. Um, and then for stock ELUs, I can actually come in here and you, some of the different uh, animals have different uh, ELU values. So I could say I have 10 cattle and uh, five ostrich and 20 rabbits. And it'll add up what those add up to 10.69 ELUs. And I can add that into my thing. And then down at the bottom, I can see, <clears throat> un oh, sorry, grand total gives me, see if I can get it all on the same page. So we've got a column for diversion, a column de for depletion. And then um, also we get a column that says how, you know, how much flow would be required to uh, to generate that num that number of acre feet within the within the year, okay. 
So <clears throat> again, this is a little hard to remember how to get to. So I'll just show you one more time. So you go to water rights, rules and procedures, appropriation policy, and then use calculator. Okay, so if you're interested in doing that calculation, you can do that right there on the website. Okay, now I want to get into some of the programs that were discussed today just briefly. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that under this program's menu item, there we have links to the different programs. So we have dam safety, we talked that about a little bit, and you can look up information about all the dams in the state. Uh, same with stream alteration. Um, let's see, let's go down to, um, it, I'm going to just go to adjudication. On adjudication, you can click on this link for proposed determinations. And you can see we have uh, links and information about all the proposed determinations. Um, and adjudication proceedings that are going on. I'm sorry, I meant to click on adjudication status. <clears throat> if I go to adjudication status, now I can get some information of the status of these different adjudications that are going on. And I can click on any of these and stuff. And for example, I can click on one of these and get a link to the list of unclaimed rights if. If, if that has, has occurred for adjudication. Also, we have the hydrographic survey maps that uh, Josh mentioned. Um, these, these, are all, these have all been scanned and digitized. Um, you can just click on any one of these and see the image. Not all, but a lot, a lot of them have been what we call geo-referenced so that we can plot them right on a... Um, on a map, so let's try that real quick. Um, so I would need to turn on th this layer, hydro map, uh, I'm sorry, hydrographic survey maps. Maybe I should zoom in a little here. You can see these, uh, so the one I clicked on is for Hamlin Valley, which is this valley here in area 19. And, and these are the different hydrographic survey maps that have been prepared. I can zoom down in and get the detail on those, <clears throat> on those maps, okay? And so then you could also, you know, turn on the different layers, turn on points of diversion, maybe, and see where points of diversion are in relationship to that map. Okay. So moving on. Okay, so <clears throat> I said yesterday we'd get to this data. That's what I'm going to talk about for the rest of the time. Um, so under this data menu item, we've got several things. There's a lot of data that we have on our website. Almost, almost everything, every record, everything can be accessed through our website. So we have publications. Tamara mentioned that if you go to our water right uh, policies by area that uh, for a particular area the um, any publications well not not all publications but quite a few that that we rely upon are, are listed there but also you can we can get those here so we can come in here and uh, view view these publications um, and they're kind of sorted by type so we have uh, groundwater conditions in Utah, and that's something the USGS puts out every year to, uh, that shows uh, groundwater usage in the state. Um, we have our uh, technical publications, and so we can go to any of those, and all these publications are there, and we can click on them, and, and you can re read those. Um, also, under this publications, Page. We've got a link here to water rights brochures, and I actually that was also a link right on our home page. Show that there. Um, these are brochures that we've 
put together that just talk about basically different, different parts of water rights, but I did want to point out that on this page, you can get to and view the flow chart that was discussed yesterday about the application process. Okay. All right. Next thing in, in the data item is uh, we have GIS and maps. And so here um, we have different maps um, under that, that can be viewed and looked at under this uh, ESRI map interface section that just takes you to the map that we've, we've been working with. Um, the different, these different maps just add different layers by default that would be pertinent to that topic. But again, as showed yesterday, you can add any layer at any time to that map. Also, we have GIS data. If, if you're versed in GIS, um, you can actually come here and download uh, GIS data and produce your own maps, evaluate things um, with your own uh, software package. So we, we have these available in shape files for use with uh, products that use shape files, such as ArcMap. Um, then we also have uh, KML, KMZ files that are used by Google Earth. So you could, uh, for example, we have uh, water rights points of diversion. You can get all the points of diversion in the state in one file and pull that up on in your mapping software and and uh, and review it that way. Um, you can also there's a way to download all the data from our database tables that and you can do it from our website and. To do that, you just need to contact uh, technical services and we can set you up with that. You can, if you're interested. Okay. Okay, let's see here. So, um, let me just also show um, under, under flow records. This takes us to our distribution page. Um, for public water suppliers, we can click on, on this link and go to uh, water use data. And here we have a listing, and this is a list that you can scroll down through and maybe filter out the types. But as mentioned before, we collect water from uh, public water suppliers, industrial suppliers, and then there are others that are listed here as management plan reporting. They, um, those are just additional entities that we collect uh, water use data. But if I pick a public water supplier, I can then come down and see this is the information that has been reported in that annual survey. Okay, and I can get information about their water use. And if I go down further, I get um, information about diversions from uh, individual s water sources. Okay. Also, um, we have flow records re uh, related to our distribution systems. So Jared talked about distribution systems. If I come here, um, anything to do with distribution systems can be accessed here. So I can pick um, any of these systems. Um, Let's just go to Weber River, and there's a lot of information, but if I click on water records, I get a list. This looks much better if you don't have to zoom in, but I get a list of all the different um, locations where we, where we have records that pertain to that distribution system, okay? And if for some of these, we collect real-time data, which means we have some sort of telemetry on site or another, um, or another agency does, then we're able to get that data also. And so I can actually show only real-time, and it'll show the, let me just pan over. It'll show the latest real-time value for that particular location and the time that that value was, was recorded, okay? Or um, also can click on any of these and 
we have our daily values table. It's just a tape, and this would be a table of, of the, so in this case, the mean flow in CFS at this particular uh, measurement location. Okay. And then those records, depending on the station, those records could go back quite a ways. This one back goes back to 1948. All right. And then also right on, uh, speaking of the real-time data, um, we do have a link right to a page with uh, real-time. These are all links to uh, systems or parts of systems where, where we do have real-time data. Um, some of these are external links that are uh, kept by other entities on their own web pages. But if you want real-time data, you can find it there. Okay, um, we have information about wells. Jim Goddard covered that. Um, now under this under groundwater tab, here's where we can get information about groundwater in the state, okay? First link, we have groundwater management plans. Um, those are for locations. The groundwater management plan is, is, is set up to ensure that uh, groundwater withdrawals don't exceed what we call the safe yield of a, of a groundwater basin or the amount of recharge that, that that groundwater basin receives on an annual basis. And so we set up these plans um, to, that dictate how that water resource is going to be um, managed uh, for, for that particular basin. So we have several of those. Uh, throughout the state and any information about those can be accessed here. Um, let's see, we have our recharge and recovery projects that Kurt talked about today. We can come here and see the, the, the various projects that have been filed in the state so far. So far we have 12 recharge applications. Not a, not a whole lot, but, but <clears throat> I think about half of those have been filed in just the last uh, two or three years, so definitely um, starting to be used more. All right, and then also, lastly, uh, regarding groundwater, we have uh, information related to groundwater models, okay? So if I click on this uh, model data link, Um, we have links to where you can download groundwater models uh, that have been, these are numerical groundwater models that have been developed by various people, various entities, mostly USGS um, in, in parts of their studies. And so if you're a modeler, if somebody in your organization can run a groundwater model, you could use those um, for information that might help you. Then also, we have what we call our groundwater model automated sim simulation tool. And so I can come and, and this map shows where, where this particular analysis can be done, or we have a list of these on the right, on the left, okay? And I went ahead and did this, so I'm just gonna pull up this page. So I click on one, it would take me, if I clicked on Southern Utah Valley, it would take me to this page and over here on the left, um, we have this section. Just collapse these, so I can simulate um, the well imp well impact. It means I can simulate the drawdown that would result by adding a well at a particular location and depth with a given diversion. And, and I can see what that's going to do. So <clears throat> on this map, we can see the, the black line represents the, the, the boundary of the model of what's being modeled. And I um, use these tools. I, have, I put in a diversion, 1,000 acre feet, depth of 200 to 300 feet for uh, where the well is pumping from. And I was able to click on the map, the location I'm interested in, and then I clicked Run Simulation, and, and I 
it generated this output. So I've got a legend of the drawdown. So this shows the drawdown that would result, drawdown in the aquifer that would result from that pumping. Okay, so this this can be used just to get you know a quick estimation of what some well pumping effects might be um, at a particular location. Uh, doesn't uh, can't be used really to to get uh, impacts to other other sources such as springs or surface water sources, and it can't be really used for you know climate change. But just based on the model as it's as it's been developed. You know, if you add a well, or you can actually add multiple wells, you can see what what the change in the aquifer in the in the aquifer water table might be. Um, let's see here, and I can also generate path lines. Let me zoom out, so I could click a particular location. And I can see where the water, so the, where, where the line transitions from green to blue would be where I clicked on the map. And the green shows where that water, particle water would have come from based on how this model is simulating the aquifer. And then the blue would represent from that point I clicked where a particle of water would move through the system and then either exit or okay. and let's see finally if I can kind of zoom in to where I was looking at my change in the aquifer <clears throat> I can uh, turn on this uh, some of these map layers points of diversion I can see okay you know where wells might be located with respect to where these changes in the in the aquifer might occur based on the model, right? And just check. Okay, so that's uh, everything that that I wanted to cover, and I'm open to ask answer any questions if somebody has any. Uh, we try to keep uh, our website running good and. You know, a lot of it's used for a lot of stuff on a daily basis. But if you find any problems, please tell us. Or if you have any suggestions how we can make it better, we're definitely open to that. So, if there's no questions, and I'll thank you for your time.